Good morning, boys and girls. I trust that you had a great Christmas and a fun time with family, and you may still have family in town, and I bet you're playing with all the cool stuff you got. Well, we have another holiday coming up on Saturday. Well, Friday. What is it? Does anybody know? New Year's Eve, and then what is Saturday? New Year's Day, so it won't be 2021 anymore. It'll be 2022. That's kind of hard to say. Well, I got a fun book that talks maybe about a new year. It's called Angelina and her ice skates. Was it cold enough on Christmas to do any ice skating? No, not here. Is it going to be cold enough maybe next weekend? It kind of sounds like it on Saturday. They're kind of saying it's going to get chilly. We'll see. I know I spent Christmas outside in a t-shirt and it was kind of great. I can't complain. Let's see about Angelina and her ice skates. Angelina absolutely loves snowy winter days when she could ice skate with her friends on Miller's Pond. The ice sparkled like glass and they raced across it in pairs, practicing spins and twirls and figure eights. Can any of you do twirls and figure eights on this ice? I have to admit, I can't. I can't ice skate. I'm not very good at it. I kind of fall down a lot. It says everyone in the village was getting ready for New Year's Eve, and Angelina was preparing a special ice skating show. Her little cousin Henry wanted to be in the show too, even though he often tumbled off the ice and fell into the snowbanks. That would be me. I would be like cousin Henry. Well, we'll need someone to be the Snow King, said Angelina's friend Flora, pure pirouetting across the ice as the Snow Princess. I'll be the king, shouted Henry, but then he tripped and he slid into Alice, who was going to be the Snow Fairy. You'd be a better snow shovel, said Alice, crossly as she dusted off her skates. <laughs> snow shovel. Don't worry, Henry, said Angelina. Hold on to me and let's practice skating together. They linked their tails and they tried to skate in a circle, but it wasn't easy on the slippery ice. Just then, Spike and Sammy, two big boys from school, raced by playing hockey and almost knocked them all over. Hey, shouted Felicity, but the boys were already gone laughing and yelling across the ice. Never mind, said Angelina, helping Felicity get her balance. Let me show you how to skate backward. Do you see him on there? Can anybody skate backwards? It says, but before long, Spike and Sammy tore past again, spraying snow in all directions. When they zipped through Angelina's rehearsal a third time, she got angry. Please stop interrupting us, she scolded. But the boys just laughed and they grabbed Angelina's scarf and tweaked Flora's whiskers. Little ballerinas can't catch us, they shouted as they zoomed away. Angelina and her friends chased Spike and Sammy all across the ice and then Angelina made a huge snowball and hurled it at the boys. Did you think she hit them? Great! A snowball fight, Spike yelled, throwing one back at Angelina. Then everybody started throwing snowballs everywhere, and soon Miller's Pond was a blizzard of flying snow and shouting skaters. Looky there. They had so much fun, they stayed until Flora got ice down her neck and Alice's toes began to freeze. Then they trudged back to Angelina's house, feeling tired and frozen. What's wrong? asked Angelina's mother. Our New Year's Eve ice dance is a mess, said Angelina sadly. We haven't got costumes or scenery and Spike and Sammy keep bothering us. I can help you with costumes, said Mrs. Mouseling. And maybe the boys are teasing you because they want you to pay attention to them. Angelina was surprised. That gives me an idea. So our mom's gonna help. 
It says the next day, Angelina put on her skates and she whizzed past Spike and Sammy, snatched their caps and raced off laughing with the boys just behind her. They were very fast, but Angelina could do all sorts of tricky twists and spins. And just as Spike and Sammy thought they would grab her, she spun out of reach and they smashed into each other, collapsing on the ice. Spike gazed at Angelina in admiration. You ballerinas are fast. Would you like to be in our show? Asked Angelina, tossing back their caps. Spike and Sammy leapt up. Yes, they shouted, skating in circles around her. Sammy loved doing funny tricks and Spike who could skate backward was proud to be the snow king. Best of all, they helped Henry build a huge snow fort. It will make a nice snow palace for our show, said Henry enthusiastically. What a great idea, admired Angelina. Sounds like they're gonna have a good show. On New Year's Eve, the whole village dressed up and came to celebrate Miller's Pond looked as magical as the performers skated onto the ice and Miss Mouseling's costumes and Henry's snow fort gleamed in the moonlight. When Angelina danced into the spotlight that night, she felt just like a real snow queen. Spike and Sammy did exciting leaps and jumps together and Henry was thrilled to be the king's attendant while Felicity, Flora and Alice seemed to fly across the ice like delicate snowflakes delicate snowflakes. They look cute. It says at the end of the performance, as the magic hour of midnight approached and fireworks sparkled in the sky, Angelina and her friends wished everyone joy and peace, and they all sang and danced together to welcome in the new year. And there they are. Does anybody else have plans to stay up till midnight and welcome in the new year? I'd like to say that I might make it, but you know what? A lot of times I fall asleep, just like you do probably. But I'll try this year. Well, my next one is called a couch for a llama. Does anybody have a llama? Does your llama have a couch? Well, this llama does. Let's find out about him. A couch for llama. The Lago family's couch was well loved. It was the perfect spot for snuggling and reading, card playing, fort building, and hiding and seeking. They had many good times together. So raise your hand. Do you use your couch for a fort? fort? Do you play hide and seek with your couch? Do you play games on your couch? Is your couch well loved too? I know mine is. Maybe a few too many good times. Wee! Oops. Hey. Oh no, is that couch looking a little on the dirty side? A little well loved? It says one day they realized it was time for a new couch. Do you think they need one? So they piled into the family car and off they went to find a new one. Did anybody get a new couch for Christmas? Oh, uh, one that was not too big or too small, but just right. The Lago family found the perfect couch. Ooh, it's pretty, it's nice and red. How many people like red? Raise your hand. Mm, I like red too. Whoosh. But on the way home, something went wrong. Whoosh. Oh no. What happened? Did it come undone? Did it fall off the car? Llama found a couch.
Llama brayed hello to the couch, but the couch didn't say anything. Do couches talk? Llama tried to share his lunch, but the couch didn't seem to have much of an appetite. So Llama ate the couch instead. Oh no, how funny. It tasted worse than a dry, dusty tumbleweed. The couch was useless. Take it away! But it just wouldn't budge. The Lago family noticed something was missing. Oh no, where's the couch? Meanwhile, Llama decided to just ignore the couch and pretend it wasn't there. This got very, very boring. So Llama snuck up and he pounced and he bounced, he bounced, he bounced. He whirled and he twirled and he bumped and he jumped. Does he look like he's having a good time with the couch? He does, doesn't he? And fell down into the smooshy, mooshy, fluffy, puffy cushions. He actually finally completely loved the couch. Looky there, isn't he excited? The Lago family found their couch and also a llama. Looky there, who's asleep on that couch? Llama. Specifically, a stubborn, couch-loving kind of llama. They had a great idea. Don't worry, llama, we'll be back. What do you think their idea is? What a surprise, a couch just for Llama. At the end of the day, the Lago family was happy with their new couch. And what did they take Llama? Let's see what Llama thought. But Llama was the happiest of all. Look at him, he got a new couch and a new bed. And it looks pretty comfy there. Oh, how exciting. They got a new couch and Llama got a couch. He was so excited, wasn't he? Well, anybody else need a hug today? Well, our friend here does. He says, I need a hug. So let's see. Uh-oh. Look at that. He says, help. Get away, prickles, shoo, no, 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 help. Get away, spikes, hmm. Those don't sound like the words that we hear when we're given a hug, does it? I need a hug. Will you cuddle me, Lou? Hmm. What, with those spikes? Get away from me, shoo. Aw, he doesn't want to hug him. I need a hug, will you cuddle me, Ken? What do you think Ken's gonna say? Help, it's that prickly thing at it again. Well. That doesn't sound very nice, does it? The prickly thing wants a hug. Ken doesn't want to give him one. I need a hug. Will you cuddle me, Joe? What do you think Joe's going to say? Cuddle you? I won't. No, no, no. Well, Joe doesn't want to give him a hug either. No one will hug me. That's not very kind. But hey, wait a minute. Hmm. 
You've all changed your mind? Looky there, they're coming running. Do they, you think they want to give him a hug? Hmm. They ran past him. What do you see coming? What's that up there in the corner? Do you see it? Hmm. Gosh, all I did was ask for a kiss. Nobody wants to kiss him and nobody wants to hug him. I bet nobody turns down your hugs. Well, isn't this lovely? Yes, about this. How about this? Looky there. They found their hug and their cuddle and their kiss. What good friends. How cute is that? And it says, oh, hugs, oh, aw, kisses, kiss, 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 cuddles. And hugs. Aww. Oh, how lovely. How cute. Very cute. So I bet nobody runs from you when you say, I need a hug. Do they? Are you prickly like that? Probably not. Okay, well, got one more fun book for us today. And then the next time we join for story time, it'll be a whole new year. Are you excited? You sound excited. Well, how about we end on the return of Thelma the Unicorn? I know we've read about Thelma before. So this is the sequel. And it says on the back of my book that she's missing. Hmm, I wonder what we're gonna learn about the return of Thelma the Unicorn. Lucky there, it shows her missing. She's a pretty cute unicorn. Thelma felt a little shocked. In fact, she felt quite torn. You see, she'd made the whole world sad. We missed our unicorn. Where is Thelma? Any information, please call 1-800-THELMA. Thelma, please come back. From every corner of the earth, her fans did wail and cry. Thelma, Thelma, please come back to us. Why did you leave us? Why? Oh, they really miss Thelma, don't they? Thelma's best friend, Otis, and her all-time greatest fan said, gee, they really miss you. We should help them if we can. Help them, blurted Thelma. You mean dress up like before? They don't need phony unicorns. Of that, I was quite sure. But Otis shook his shaggy head and said, I think they do. You're not phony, you're the best. And what they miss is you. You made people happy. They felt cheerful for a while. Who cares if it's a costume? Thelma, you made people smile. There's nothing wrong with make-believe. You can be a star. There is nothing wrong with make-believe, is there? Who wants to pretend to be a unicorn? Me, 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 me. I want to pretend to be a unicorn. As long as you remember what you love and who you are. But last time it was scary. Oh, and some of them were mean. Well, this time you'll have backup. I'm here for you, my queen. Oh, is Otis gonna help her? What a sweet friend. It's great to have friends that help, isn't it? But I don't have my outfit. How can I disguise my face? Otis said, I kept this and some glitter just in case. So just like that, they hit the road. They barely stopped to pack. They both had lots of work to do. The unicorn was back. There she is, Thelma the unicorn. Yay. The whole wide world was overjoyed. Her fans all went berserk. But this time, Thelma had her friend and that's what made it work. 
Otis there helping her? What a good friend Otis is. Her fabulousness exploded like a joyful glitter bomb. While Otis cheered her from the wings, girl, get your sparkle on. Look at her. She's one pretty unicorn, isn't she? All her sparkles. Lives were changed, money raised for charity, and fun was had, and love was in the air, and at the end of every day, her friend was always there. What a good friend. Otis watched her spread the love. He felt so very proud. Thelma could just do her thing. He handled every crowd. So when those mean old haters came to mock or disc or scoff, she felt so brave and happy she could always shake it off. Look at her, isn't she silly? And on days off, they cuddled up beneath their favorite tree and Otis would recite these words as Thelma smiled with glee. The world may not be perfect. Yes, a rose may have its thorns, but one thing is for certain. The world needs unicorns. Yay, who loves unicorns? Let me hear you. Oh my goodness, we have lots of unicorn lovers out there. I love unicorns too. Yay. Anybody going to have any fireworks for the New Year's? How fitting. Maybe you can dress up as a unicorn for New Year's. That'd be fun. Well, I hope you have a great week. And remember, the library is open today through Thursday from 9 to 9. And then we will be closed Friday and Saturday and reopen again on January 3rd at 9 a.m. Have a great week. Merry, happy new year. Have fun celebrating. Make some unicorn time. And we'll see you again next week. Goodbye.